candidate and her sidekick tonight. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. I got to tell you, I'm, uh, I, I went to Chick-fil-A for the first time like a couple of weeks ago, but right now I'm craving a sandwich. <laughs> just absolutely craving a sandwich. You'll find out why in just a minute. Uh, great to have you aboard. Thanks very much. Uh, Patricia Morgan, the minority leader, state representative, and gubernatorial candidate on the Republican side is my guest here this evening. We'll get to Patricia and her sidekick in at least for a segment in just a second uh you know what there's so much going on here and kind of the jolt of the paw Sox decision to move and uh, the 195 traffic and a whole bunch of things that grab our attention can divert our attention from something that's happening in washington which is very 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 important this headline uh, of course this was washington and new york actually virginia and new york in federal courts manafort to the left and Michael Cohen to the right. Manafort's uh, down on eight counts, and I'm guessing the prosecution, the uh, special counsel, will not pursue the other ten. Um, not necessary, especially with another trial coming up for Manafort. So I'm guessing he'll be wheeling and dealing sooner or later. Michael Cohen looks like he is wheeling and dealing. He doesn't have a cooperation agreement yet, and even without it, uh, more or less um, uh, informally indicted the president himself on the campaign finance stuff. Uh, this is this is real. This is real. It's going to be really interesting to see where Republicans uh, get off the exit ramp because notwithstanding the question of whether a president can be indicted, this is the kind of stuff that in normal times, if we ever had any, would be impeachable. No doubt. Stay tuned for that, right? Okay, let's come home. So you know the Worcester story, right? Worcester puts up a boatload of dough and uh, in coordination with the state, the Commonwealth, uh, steal our paw socks from us. Interestingly enough, they already have a ball club up there, a collegiate ball club, which generates some 2,500 fans nightly. And the uh, owner of that club was at the Worcester City Hall last night, uh, somewhat offended and heartbroken. I'm here because there's something that troubles me. And as I look around this chamber, there's just too many faces of people who I haven't seen at the ballpark in the last year, or the last two years, some even in the last three years. And Worcester Braveheart's aren't going to get in the way of progress in this city. But when the discussion of progress in this city involves the discussion of baseball, we would expect to have a seat at that table. My question to this body, what else can we do? All right, that's uh, Dave Peterson, I believe. He is the general manager, and I think he's got a piece of the Bravehearts. A very successful franchise up there. It's going to be really interesting to see whether they fold, um, relocate, or whether they can live side by side. I mean, there's only so many baseball nights that will go around. I'm not saying that the Worcester deal is flimsy. I'm just saying that uh, all the... Uh, strings are not completely attached yet in Worcester. In the meantime, at home today, the uh, Paw Sox Irish Wake happened at Slater Mill. I've never seen anything like this. Really, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, the mayor, doing what he can to try to keep his city breathing, uh, gave a, hey, listen, we're still terrific speech, and it was really appropriate. Uh, the governor was there, and I tweeted out that while well, Don Grebian asked uh, for a round of applause for <laughs> Gina Raimondo uh, for her leadership on this. I think he had his toes and fingers crossed. Anyway, I've wondered about the leadership question, right? And so I wanted to get something confirmed. And that is, you know, were all of the players who make these decisions ever in the same room to try to get this thing done? I asked the mayor that question. Confirm one more time how many times the governor, the Senate president, the House speaker, the mayor, 
and the Paw Sox City officials got together in one room to try to bang this deal out. That clearly is a difference. We did it, uh, we chose to do it in different re reasons. We were never in the same room at the same time. That's fair, absolutely. And notwithstanding the boatload of dough that Worcester put on the table, the Senate deal would have been accepted by the Paw Sox, yes or no? To, to the best of my knowledge, yes. Right. You understand why I'm asking? Was the governor, or were the governor, the Senate president, the House speaker, the mayor, and the Paw Sox officials all over the same conference table? It's all right, guys, let's work this thing out. Never once, according to the mayor. Then I asked the governor the same question. And the first time I asked her, the tape kind of edged up here. The first time I asked her, she was like, uh, gee, I don't know. And then I pressed her on it. In leadership, all the leadership never got in the same room that with the players. True. That is not true. I had them in my office on more than one occasion. The speaker, the yes. Senate president, yes. you, and the Paw Sox, you know, the mayor, to put a deal together. Yes, absolutely. So you more just said you didn't remember, and now I'm asking you again. A number of times. I, I don't know if it was one or two or five, but it. The mayor just told me it never happened. That isn't true. The, I specifically remember sitting at my desk. Anyway, that is not a fruitful discussion. Finger pointing is not where we need. I'm just I'm just, talking, I'm, I'm just going, I'm asking, to, I'm, I'm pointing to the leadership issue. Everybody's talking about the great leadership. I'm asking if all the leaders and all the players in this equation ever locked themselves together to try to get this deal done and get on the same page. And I'm saying yes, we did. <clears throat> Moving on. The uh, debate issue. Governor Armando won't debate on the Democratic side, and Governor, uh, well, gee, I don't know if that's Freudian, uh, Mayor Fung decided that he was going to run to Woonsocket, all due respect to that great city, for a mini debate on a toy radio station. Uh, Patricia Morgan didn't like that idea. Will participate in any statewide debate that is either on TV or radio because the voters deserve to hear where we stand as candidates before they vote for us. And so, here we are, not only to discuss debates, but to discuss the issues, Patricia Morgan, the candidate, and how do I refer to this person? Al, Al the debate chicken. Al the debate chicken, who doesn't debate? Well, doesn't... neither does the other Al. <laughs> When did, uh, when did the chicken strategy come into play? When Alan Fung said he wouldn't debate. I mean, he's not even responding to invitations, and he must. Well, it's funny, uh, as we tape in the afternoon here at uh, 1.42 in the afternoon, you are scheduled for a radio debate on WPRO at 5. Yes. Um, now, you're watching this at 7.30 at midnight, so it's already happened. But do you think you'll make a last-minute show? I don't, and I think people should really question that. Well, you, said, you told me you were on another forum today as well, and you didn't. Uh, right. He was invited to come on a Channel 6 mm -hmm. um, with Joe Paolino, and he just didn't respond. Didn't even RSVP. Didn't even didn't say even that he'd didn't gotten even the send invitation. Joe a Dear Joe or Dear John letter. Yeah, didn't send... Didn't send a chicken to sit in for him. What's your, uh, what's your theory on this? Either he really, uh, my sense is that he doesn't have the capability, the ideas, the opinions that he wants to share with people. He'd rather be a blank slate. You agree, chicken? <laughs> All right, we'll get to the issues when we get back. Let me just say this before we break, though. Um, you know, sometimes uh, even I need to check myself and give myself a five-yard penalty. When I say toy radio station in Woonsocket, I have deep respect for the Woonsocket radio owners. There's two radio stations there that have survived consolidation, you know, everything in the business, and, and they're still doing a terrific job for that community. I don't begrudge Alan Fung showing up to a debate amongst the candidates on a radio station in Woonsocket. Uh, they deserve more respect than a toy radio station reference. But my point is, my point is, is that this is a statewide race. And clearly there's an effort to say, hey, listen, I debated, and keep the damage, if there's going to be any, the exposure to a minimum. And that's the point about, about this. Uh, you know, Woonsocket should be included. 
but that they're not doing television, either Gina or Alan Fung in the primaries. They're not doing, you know, radio of, of, of significant statewide stature. It's a problem. We'll come back and talk issues, probably without the chicken. Stick with us. So tomorrow night, the Pawtucket mayor, Don Grebian, is scheduled to be here. Um, listen, I think if you followed any of the work that I've done over the years, um, I don't do a lot of back padding of elected officials unless they deserve it. But when they do, I will. And this guy did everything he could. Everything he could. Our goal tomorrow night is to see if we can get some insight as to the stuff that we probably don't know about in order to how this deal went south. So we'll talk to the mayor about that tomorrow night. And I'll see you on the radio at 3 on WPRO. Headed to Chick-fil-A. I'm, I'm hungry. I got, a, I got a craving. I don't know why. So yeah.